snowflakes in April. The sun is shining. I close my eyes. You're cold as ice. Snowflakes in your eyes. Pretend to hate me. I know I lie. I realized. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Nurit and I'm speaking with you today from Budapest, Hungary. And today my guest again is Jesper. Jesper, right? And I don't remember how to pronounce your last name. Can you help me with that? Uh, it's pronounced Hovenskog. Hovenskog. Okay. <laughs> Jesper Hovenskog from Denmark. And uh, if you have um, subscribed to my channel and, and get to my videos, then you will know that the last video that we did uh, was also with Jesper. And at that time, the, the last video was called um, How to Make Presence Permanent. And uh, that has been a question that uh, Jesper wrote to us. Uh, asking that and then the video is Gabor answering that question for you pretty much and oh he did yeah yeah <laughs> since then Jesper has been practicing the technique that Gabor showed him on the video and uh, we had a wonderful uh, had wonderful results so he's gonna share that with us today thank you and welcome with Jesper thank you Nuri it's and nice to see you <laughs> nice to see you again <laughs> especially under these circumstances yes so uh, tell us what happened or tell us a little before what happened yeah, yeah well uh, maybe i should go back a little bit uh, and uh, well i've been on my spiritual path um, for like 15 years uh, i've been meditating since 2005 uh, where I started learning some techniques called the Shire, Shire Ascension techniques. And uh, well, that was the first time I really felt uh, peace within after using those techniques. So that led me down this path where I really wanted to make that kind of peace or presence permanent. But after a while, uh, things didn't really work for me. So I guess I was, um, I, I went down a different path instead. But then I got into a yoga system called Seismark, where we got transmission from, uh, to the heart. And that was wonderful. But after a few years there, I didn't really feel that it made the changes I wanted. So uh, off I went uh, again. Um, and then after that, I actually went to the ceremony in England where I, it's called Nanvidi, um, where there's this Indian master and he say all these sentences in, the, in, in his language and we are supposed to repeat all the sentences. And that is supposed to make the soul in you or the self and your relative self separate. And after that, something did change, but it wasn't really a radical change at all. Um, but it was a wonderful experience, and I actually went through that twice. Um, but I guess I had a critical mind. I, I always uh, looked, I was always, always very observant of my conditioning and at what stage I had reached uh, at the point. So I, after that, I went on and then I came into self-inquiry, Ramana Maharshi's self-inquiry. And uh, I got a in touch with an American teacher who was also doing some transmission. And he did that with me. And uh, after that, it, that happened a few years ago, my energy structure actually changed completely. But I also noticed that I couldn't carry presence with me all the time that was actually my goal um, but some a radical change did happen with me at, at that time and and then along with that i was practicing self-inquiry and 
I think that actually brought me to this point where I met Gabor. Uh, and that is about a, a month ago now. Um, and I wrote to you, Nurit and Gabor, asking, okay, how do I make presence permanent? Because I was actually getting tired of pra practicing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I did this interview with Gabor and he showed me these very incredible techniques. How did, had, sorry, how did you hear about Gabor? How did I hear about Gabor? Um, I have to recall how I, how I heard about him. I think I, I watched some of uh, your videos on the on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, and then I, I noticed Gabor and I, I checked him out. Actually, one video that, that I recall now is um, I was watching a conch right. called Consciousness TV with the uh, yeah. yeah with Ian McNay, and um, I was watching uh, Gabor's uh, interview, uh, and he was also speaking with another awakening uh, guy who was called Martin uh, Wilson. Martin Wilson, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's great. <laughs> So I've, I was actually watching both those videos uh, and uh, and interviews and and Gabor he really inspired me because he was speaking about this technique of having some portion of your awareness within you at the same time while you're doing activities and I was I was already um, uh, aware of that technique I was actually already practicing it so my question to Gabor was if I practice this technique and with uh, persistency uh, will it become permanent mm. and um, yeah so and after that I had an interview that is now on YouTube and uh, he told me many things I didn't know about uh, including what that technique would do for me so I practiced what the board told me for like 14 days I think and after that, I had an awakening. I can actually say that. What actually happened, it happened on uh, September 14. I was driving to, 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 my, to work. And uh, I have a habit of practicing while driving. Some people, they, they often say to me, they ask me, well, isn't it dangerous to practice <laughs> driving? Well, my response is that, well, I, I always become way more present with whatever is going on with the traffic. So no, I don't think it's, it's dangerous. It's probably safer. <laughs> it's probably safer, yeah, because I don't really, uh, I, I had a habit for a long time of, of practicing with my eyes closed. And I sometimes did that, um, but not that often anymore. My new practice became practicing with my eyes open. And that was also the advice I, I got from Gabor. Yeah. So I was practicing while driving. And at some point, uh, I was using uh, different techniques. Uh, I was mostly doing uh, what Gabor had told me. And to be honest, I was also doing a, a little bit of self-inquiry at the same time, uh, just asking who is, uh, who is having this experience. And then I was combining that with what the techniques uh, uh, with the techniques Gabor told me to do and I was actually that morning I was actually having a lot of uh, emotions going through me and it was it was actually uh, quite hard to deal with so I was practicing in my car and and all of a sudden while practicing I could feel all my emotions there was a complete release um, there was like something within me I don't quite know what it was but it released its grip on me and that was a total relaxation of the mind and the body after that mm -hmm. uh, there was a feeling that okay it's, it's too soon to blow the horn and say okay now it's permanent I've, I've been in different situations in my life before where I thought it was permanent but never anything like this before so there was something that it within me that just disappeared we might call it ego i actually don't know but but i i like to think that it is so 
after that experience, presence has actually been with me all the time. It varies in degrees though. Um, that means that it's not always a blissful state, but, and there can be uh, thinking as well. But what I notice is that the chatter in my, my mind has gone down, um, way down actually, it's is, is actually stopped uh, to a, a certain degree. But I can still think in pictures, uh, that might sound weird, but, um, but what happens is that whenever I do something, there's thinking in, in to uh, a degree that is demanded uh, in, this, in the moment. Mm -hmm. But whenever I'm not doing anything, my body and mind returns to a, a whole unity where presence is, is permanent. Uh, it's not, that's not saying that presence, presence is, isn't permanent doing the activities. It's, it's actually uh, regulating uh, its, its power uh, during whatever I'm, I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, but, but after the, afterwards there is, there's a, a unity feeling uh, within me. Uh, I, I told you, Nuri, that it sometimes feels like a, a, a that I'm being filled like a balloon, but instead of air, it's be, I'm being filled with with presence, and that happens automatically. Wow. So, and that experience has actually been with me ever since um, September 14. Wow. And um, yeah, and I just, I think I can tell the, the viewers about, about this, but I just had a conversation with Gabor um, because I, I had I noticed that after a while where I felt very stable and very peaceful, stuff came, came up to, came to the surface. And what I noticed is that there's actually no filter anymore. There's n the resistance to what is is more or less gone. Mm -hmm. that, that means that I feel a lot of stuff uh, way more intense sometimes now. Uh, it's it's it become almost impossible for me to hold stuff back. Mm -hmm. And he told me perhaps some secrets that I didn't know about uh, in this process that actually made a lot of sense uh, to me. There, there was, um, to be honest, there was a, a thought um, that maybe, okay, maybe uh, this was not an awakening or maybe I would fall from grace because I was feeling uh, emotions uh, again. Um, but, but that is not my experience. Uh, presence is actually still there, even though I feel it. So, yeah, that might make, yeah, that might, uh, cast a little clarity over the, the yeah. topic. Yeah. There is, um, just to, to clarify a little bit for our viewers, the filter that, that uh, Jesper is speaking about, um, most of us, whether we've been on spiritual paths before or not, somehow life has trained us or other teachings have trained us or whatever, you, whatever the case may be, to suppress emotions to suppress uh, feelings to suppress fear to suppress anything that we consider to be negative there's since the day we were we've been educated there's been labeling this is right this is wrong this is positive this is negative it's the way of life and duality and so especially for spiritual people they try we there's a, an attempt to want to hide those negative things and to try to be what uh, what we think uh, the positive pious uh, spiritual person should be like and that's create the, that creates the filter and when you have that shift that uh Jesper is speaking about that filter drops <laughs> i would say that was a 180 degree uh, turnaround for me and after my experience that my body, um, it, it is now working uh, in a completely different way than it was before. There's a way of more grounding and, and presence is permanent. Um, there's no doubt about that. 
Um, but before I was, I was probably meditating to change feelings and to change my state of mind. But when I feel when something comes up now, it's there is more of a acceptance of what is. Uh, that, that that means that I'm not really trying to change what what is. I'm just letting them be. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I find that when I embrace whatever uh, I feel, it it tend to yeah it tend to disappear. But my intention is not to make it disappear. Mm. And and um, yeah, sometimes I kind of feel like a, a an open window for whatever is is going on, not only within me but also out in society. Mm -hmm. Um, and in my conversation with uh, Kapoor, he clarified that, yeah, that is actually what is going on. Um, that was a great help. Um, so, yeah. So I don't really have any, um, maybe a little, I don't know, but, but I would say that it's, it's not the same resistance uh, I had before. There's a totally different tension now. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, and and although this may be also be a, a bit important to talk about, but there's it's not like I'm analyzing my state of mind. I'm more like I'm an observant to what is going on, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I I don't talk about it. Um, actually, I needed to talk with Gabor and Dorit about all this afterwards to clarify okay what is actually going on within me and uh, but it's it's completely different exist existence than before mm -hmm. no doubt about that have you found any changes in your day-to-day -day life right the moment the day after or the days after the awakening things did change i i may it may be a subtle change but i, I I thought that people were getting a bit nicer <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> and things uh, tended to work out. But actually when, uh, when I had that other experience of things coming up, uh, it also kind of mirrored the outer world at the same time. So, so you could say that uh, it, it seemed like, some of the things that I thought were going, going well were actually not going that well at the same time. Mm. But that makes sense if, if I am now a, a mirror for what is going on. Um, so there is a there is a cleaning process going on, but not in the sense that I, I thought it would be. It's, it's more like before I, I, I find myself to be an open window for what is going on. Mm. So sometimes when we need to clean whatever is, is there, it can be a bit of a mess, but it doesn't mean that it's not going in the right direction. Yes. So yeah, um, that is a change that I've noticed that I tend to mirror whatever is going on inside me as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And when, when those things come up, how do you handle them in your in your current uh, I don't want to call it state of mind because it's not in the mind at all, but in your in, in while well, being present. Yeah, well, first off, I am very present with whatever is going going on, especially what is going on within me. Uh, I still consider myself to be a newborn baby at this point and in awakening. So there's still some adjustment and well, it's not like there's, it's not the mind interfering, but the mind, there's some, we could call it mind, but it's, it's still trying to adjust to its new environment. So uh, there, there has been some reactions to the outer, changes that uh, um, that seems like my normal personality um, but there is definitely a, an adjustment going on uh, where I'm I'm learning 
so to speak, to be just letting it be and be present. Mm-hmm. And in my conversation with Gabor, he, he really clarified that, that, well, I hope it's okay that I just speak a little bit about that, but he, he, he actually told me that after um, awakening, what I feel uh, is mostly not mine. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's actually, uh, we are, I'm cleaning for uh, the environment and whatever is going on and the whole history of mankind. And with that knowledge, it makes it a lot easier to accept. Yeah. Yeah. So there might be a question now that, okay, is it an exception of the mind? Um, I wouldn't actually say that. Uh, there is a knowing about what is going on, but it's, it's just a, a, a letting everything be as it is in the, in the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but there is also an adjustment, and I, um, I still consider myself a baby at at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, an integration process, and um, definitely, yeah. And everything yeah. gets integrated, including the mind. So it's, it's yeah. Yeah, that's it. That is my experience as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Wow. Thank you so much, Esper, for sharing that with us. Um, I hope uh, that uh, those who are viewing it are being helped by it. These things happen, and sometimes we don't understand why. One moment we feel like there's a feeling of of this uh, stable, anchored, peaceful presence, and yet simultaneously the stuff comes up, and sometimes, I know in my case, some of the stuff that has come up for me, I didn't even recognize it. That like that's not who I am. I've never felt like that before. Why? Why now? <laughs> you know? So yeah, who knows? And we don't need to analyze it. We just need to integrate and uh, mm. keep that uh, flame of presence going. So thank you yeah. so much. Yes. Yep. Uh, I just have one last thing uh, yeah. for you. Is and today there are so many teachers uh, saying that you don't actually have to practice to to make any changes but in my experience i have been practicing for over 10 years now and uh, it well there are results now that's what i can say yeah Yeah. very 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 important point and in fact i think that was the main reason why we responded so quickly to your to your email is because you mentioned in your original email that you have been practicing yeah that you you watched the the um, conscious tv uh video and you were you have been practicing what gabor uh offered there so mm. of course there's um there's the practice yeah and who knows maybe uh, i was destined to to uh, to awaken but but i would say that practice practicing uh, whatever technique you have definitely mm. definitely makes a difference yeah so thank you again and i hope you all the viewers enjoyed it and uh, just one word uh that i want to add here is don't feel like what happened to jesper has to happen to you exactly the same way everyone is different but we wanted to share this with you because we always feel that people who practice get wonderful results and we've seen that time and time uh, time again and again with the more students, those who practice, they get wonderful results. So thank you for being the proof of that, Jesper, and uh, agreeing to speak with us today. And uh, thank you again for watching everybody and God bless.